I'm Jennifer Coyne here at the Blue Stone Museum and Art Gallery with artist Belinda Harrow, and we're here in her exhibition of um, Unsettled and to talk a bit about some of the works. So, Belinda, you have uh, three different media in this exhibition you have paintings, drawings, and sculpture. And can you talk a little bit about why you chose to work in those different areas? Um, well, I've always used a lot of different materials in my work. Uh, I think people more know me more for painting. Um, I've kind of embraced painting the last sort of 10 years, and I've been uh, spending a lot of time with that, but I've also worked sculpturally um, with soft materials in the past, and, and then in the last few years I've moved into casting, which these are. Um, and then I think drawing is always the foundation for any um, artist, really. So I had wanted the opportunity to connect the sculpture and the painting, and I thought the drawings would be the best way to do that. Drawing is much faster than painting, um, and I really actually love working on paper. Um, this paper is a special kind of um, paper that's made from stone, and it's suspended, and it's very matte and flat and smooth, and it was really lovely to work on. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed the opportunity of, of working on that material for a change. The huge drawback and the reason I don't work on drawing so much is just the cost of framing. It's so expensive, and it's kind of impractical, and it makes another step that I don't have to deal with when I paint. So. Yeah, but for this show, I thought I would um, put this grouping of drawings together um, to go along with the painting. And the interesting thing is there there is a difference in the drawings from the paintings. Like the paintings are very colorful and um, and very dynamic, and the and the drawings are very dynamic too. But they and um, maybe we can walk over and look at these ones here. Um, there's the, just the contrast. I love the areas of flat black, um, and they, it adds an element of abstraction. But there's also an element like there, there's things that are floating, are grounded. So there's an element of surrealism to the work as well. And you have also incorporated these like either speech or thought bubbles in there. You talk about why you chose to approach things differently. Um, well, this way of working with the dark skies was actually, I, I sort of worked with many years ago when I was living in New Zealand and I was working on paper and I bought some black um, gesso. This is a black gesso in the background and it makes this really beautiful um, flat surface. Um, so I brought, I decided to bring those elements. I think as an artist you're always sort of pulling things that you're confident with in your making into new series. So, um, yeah, I had the new paper that I hadn't worked on before, um, but I had this method of kind of combining the black gesso with the graphite. One of the things I couldn't get a hold of, which I had, was this like liquid graphite that I used um, with the drawings previously. I had bought from an art supply store in Christchurch, and I looked and looked and couldn't find it, which is a graphite that you paint on with a brush. Mm -hmm. And I hear people make their own, but um, so I um, I just ended up using like a really soft graphite so that I could have a play between like the flat mat and the shininess of the graphite. Um, and yeah, it just, these give me a chance to have more sort of storytelling and to literally have the animals be able to start to speak, which is what the show is all about, um, having us look at the animals and think about our relationship to them and how we're affecting them. Um, so here, the rabbits are in our contemporary world. These are all photographs I took around Regina. So the legislative building, this is an apartment building down on Hamilton Street, downtown Regina, and this is looking up um, Hamilton Street the other direction. Um, into the downtown, and yeah, the, the rabbits are talking to each other. Um, here, the rabbits are kind of talking about the risk that they still have with predators 
in um, in their urban environments. I think one of the reasons animals are with us in urban environments is they're a lot more protected. Um, but there still are coyotes that come down along the Wascana system, and I've seen coyotes walking along the path around Wascana Lake. Um, so just thinking about the city as a place of unease and um, danger, especially in the night environments. Um, and the one at the end, the, I've got the rabbits. It's, it's supposed to be sort of a snowy, wintry scene. And um, I wanted them to relate back to all the gophers that are in the show. Um, and they're talking about these animals that live in colony and that live in a dense way. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're seeing behind them is the way us in a dense environment. And, I mean, Rajan is pretty spread out and it doesn't have, it's not a super skyscraper city, but it does have some density in, in the downtown and it's certainly um, a parking lot, full of parking lots and cement and a lot less green space in that area. So yeah, and this is, you know, um, that was uh, taken on a super moon. This photograph was taken by a coworker of mine, actually, that she allowed me permission. Well, I love how like the rabbits are kind of reminiscing mm -hmm. in a way um, about what, like in my interpretation when I saw these is that they're they're thinking about what was here before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, because you see that in some of the other works, like, especially here where we've got rabbits looking at Joe Farad's sculptures of cows in front of the Mackenzie Art Gallery and thinking these would have been buffalo roaming. Yeah. Right. And I you know, thought that there too they'd be thinking about there would be prairie dogs, yeah. um, you know, on the open prairie. Not that there aren't prairie dogs in the city as you can see here, where they're, yeah. they're, uh, they're adapting. Yeah, I mean, um, I wanted to be able to um, touch on certain sort of vignettes in the city with the different media. So here I have the rabbits talking to Joe's sculptures. Um, and they're sort of talking about, I, in my mind, that rabbit is sort of saying, did you know? Like, before you were placed here, did you know that these animals were in this space? Um, and I wanted, by the variety of drawings, I wanted to touch on a number of different elements of, um, like, our modern urban lifestyle. And that includes culture. So, you know, the important role that the Mackenzie Art Gallery places in supporting artists and um, having a space where artists can uh, talk about culture and art and all of those things. Um, I also have drawings of, you know, the um, Taylor Field, thinking about when we gather for sports, um, of course, the downtown and the core. Um, but yeah, and the, uh, the city hall. So by having the drawings in here, I can sort of touch more widely on kind of urban living and a little more about the genre that's a little harder to do in the paintings. The paintings have a more simpler composition, I think. But uh, the cows actually, you know, there is a gopher problem. I don't know if they've solved it, but if you go and visit the cows, which I did at different seasons in preparing for these drawings, um, there's a lot of gopher holes and, you know, the, that little hillside that they build up to display the work is, a, you know, a complete colony for the gopher. So in this painting, I wanted to be able to capture that, you know, that those sculptures and by providing a place for those sculptures where they're kind of raised up to be seen and admired, that we've provided a little home for those gophers, you know, if the city hasn't <laughs> cleared the out. Yeah, but it's interesting too that like it, it kind of references because it's a very uh, manicured landscape mm -hmm. um, cityscape, and they're uh, you know like they would be on the open prairie before, mm -hmm. and now they're adapted to urban living and yeah, and, um, yeah digging into like the the imported lawn um, yeah that uh, you know, we see on our urban landscapes. Um, it's also interesting to me that you, you've placed a lot of the animals in front of um, uh, political buildings. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, the, the provincial building, the uh, Tommy Douglas building, you've got City Hall here, and you've, got, you've referenced the legislative buildings in a lot of works mm -hmm. as well. So um, really, um, the rep, like they be, they become political statements, really. Yeah. And um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? How they're perhaps referencing like the impacts of colonialism, you know, and how that's impacted uh, the land and um, you know the animal species and forcing them to adapt. But it also speaks to um, how it's impacted the indigenous people. Yeah, I think when you see early pictures of Regina, you know, it was sort of chosen as a space. It wasn't a naturally formed kind of, didn't feel like a place that um, people would choose to necessarily gather. And the legislative building, those early photos of it, I mean, leading, while I was making this work, they were, they were doing renovations on the dome and celebrating the 100th anniversary of the building. And, for my job, I work in and outside that building. So I have quite an intimate relationship with it and I like to walk around the lake like everyone else in Regina and it's um, a really nice space, but I also think about this is the place that, you know, where decisions are made that have impacted, you know, the people who were here first um, and have had a strong impact, is still having a strong impact on our lives, the decisions that are made in, in that building. Um, so, uh, but at the same time, because of all the park space around the building, it is, and the lake, and Moscana Creek being there, it is a hub for, for these animals. Like, you see coyotes coming once the water is frozen and walk in that area, you see, a lot of rabbits living um, in and on the grasses around around that building. So it felt like if you're going to make a body of work about um, colonialism and space and place, that you know that needs to be there. So it, yeah, it has a it's it's in so many of the works and drawings. It's in this painting as a sort of. In the backdrop, it's two paintings, three paintings, sort of hovering over the backdrop of these trees and, and the camp as well. So, yeah, I got to know it well, actually, <laughs> painting it three or four times.